Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Survivor Stock Watch Podcast. I'm your host, Aaron Armstrong, and joining me this week is Chappelle. How are you doing, Chappelle? Taryn, I'm good. I'm good. I'm happy. I was an amazing episode of Survivor. It was fun. Uh, it was different than what we've been experiencing throughout the season. So I'm glad I get to be the lucky one to come on and talk to you about these stocks because I think I have some opinions. Mm, cause should we should we call uh, you and me on a podcast the the winner circle of Survivor because we're the two draft winners? Yes, we should. Uh, uh, who did you draft this season, though? I don't remember. <laughs> it's I, the mom squad. Yeah, the mom squad. Oh, is that okay? Do you have anybody left? No, <laughs> I, I'm just down to Owen. So I think we and you are on the ropes, man. <laughs> Look, they they told me they told me that moms don't do well in Survivor, and I said not this season. That's they're gonna do well this. And then. Uh, uh, look, I, I had an all-women team on a, a very anti-women season. Look, I think I had an all-male team, and uh, I'm doing no better. <laughs> so um, make no mistake, it's not great over here in the winner's circle. We might have to add somebody to the podcast next season. We need to build our alliance. We don't have the numbers yet. <laughs> we'll have it this after next season because uh, this is definitely not uh, the best year for us. Uh, we'll have to keep our fingers crossed to see if Owen can pull it off from uh, what seems like a very difficult spot in the mm. tribe right now. Yes, uh, quite the uh, the argument uh, with Owen and James. I mean, that's how we started the episode as well as we come in with Owen being like, what the hell, James? Uh, because he had asked James who to vote for right before the vote. And James told him Ryan. But then Gabler came in and told him it was Janine. There's a little bit of weirdness about this explanation. I've been talking in the last couple of podcasts about how I feel like they haven't explained enough for me to like fully understand what's happening. Um, but apparently with Owen, he found out from Gabler it was Janine. So he votes Janine at the last minute, but is still in this episode claiming to James that he was the vote for Ryan, uh, which was weird. Right. So who was the vote for Ryan, though? If it, it was wasn't Cassidy. Gabler, so, so Cassidy would obviously like debunk that, right? Like, I don't think she has any reason to lie for Owen. Um I don't know why he was doing that. I think he was just trying to guilt James. Uh, they've been mm. at each other's throats for a little bit, it seems, in the game. Uh, but what did you think about the discussion between Owen and James, where it seems like James doesn't really feel like he owed Owen anything, uh, you know, because Owen has been putting his name down for at least one vote. I'm kind of confused as if it's two votes because Owen did say that he didn't vote for James twice. But now I don't know what to believe because it looks like Owen's, a, if not a decent liar, at least a consistent one. Yeah, so Owen was like, hey, I didn't vote. Oh, I did write your name down the first week of the merge, but not the second vote, which is true. Uh, he he did not vote for uh, for James the second time. He voted for uh, for Ryan um, and uh, and then he voted for Janine the following uh, round. Um, mm. But James seems to think that he voted for him twice, which is actually not true. The, the vote he was lying about was that he voted for Janine and not Ryan in the previous vote. Uh, this is a weird argument because neither of them really have much ground to stand on. Um, you know, like, yeah, D D Owen did vote for James and this is Survivor. <laughs> That's how it works <laughs> is that you tell people lies about what you're going to do. Uh, on the other hand, though, I feel like from from the uh, James's end, like, you, you, this is a rookie mistake, I think, to uh, to try to justify by playing like the blame game of like, uh, well, I lied to you because you wrote my name down, so you deserved me lying to you. Like, what? Do you, like, it's just like uh, that's no, no, no. Is it's not their fault. You blame the game. Mm -hmm. You know, it's yeah. it's not. Don't blame the player. Blame the game. It's a survivor. <laughs> Sorry. I love that. We need that on a t-shirt. Don't hate the player, hate the game. <laughs> Don't blame the player, blame the game. That's a good point. Um, I mean, James does have a point that you voted for me, so I really, I mean, honestly, we're not really working together, so I, you shouldn't be so incredulous. But he let Owen just get him thrown off by, like, making this grand display of, like, oh, my God, how dare you lie to me? This is so, you're so disgusting of a player. And James is like, why are you overreacting? It's like, no, James, maybe you should have overreacted when Owen voted for you. You should have made it seem like it was the worst thing in the world. Maybe get some people on your side against Owen. But he was able to take his uh, his position as like, you know, maybe weaker in the tribe and rally some people to let them know that you were in charge uh, or that you think you're running stuff. Uh, I just think he got outplayed this week. It's 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 like 
uh, it's very hard to watch that because it does like typically in Survivor, you don't see somebody get outplayed from such a vulnerable pos- position. Like Owen's basically dead in the water and. This week, he just completely flipped everything on James before James saw it, even, even saw it coming. He was arguing, thinking that it was a balanced argument. Like, I did something to you, you did something to me. But the entire time, the tide is just slowly turning against James. And it's, uh, next thing you knew, it was too late. Yeah, and he also, I, I, I had forgotten, but he also had, like, the initial instinct to be like, hey, hey, who else was in that conversation? Sammy oh, was there, too. So why is it all my fault? <laughs> yeah, that's uh, like, the worst oh. one. <laughs> Like the whole house voted you out. Why are you mad at me? It's like because I want to be, you know. Like yeah. and then, like it's a legitimate gripe that you have that like yeah the entire house voted you out. So how can you put the blame on me? But of course I can. I have nothing else to lose. I can put the blame on whoever I want. You're just the sucker who's falling from my trap here. Uh, and so I'm kind of impressed that Owen did it. Also I'm hoping that this means Owen might win the, win the draft because <laughs> then we win. <laughs> the winner circle stays just the two of yeah. us. I'll take it. It it is. It, it can also I think be telling. Uh, that like it, James is like, why aren't you mad at Sammy? And when Owen isn't mad at Sammy, like that could granted again, we don't really know a whole lot about the situation, but that could be revealing that like, Hey, maybe because Sammy isn't actually telling Owen the same thing he's telling you. And maybe he feels like, Oh, like Sammy's on his side, but you aren't. Um, there's a, there's usually a reason that one person is getting blamed more than other people. Yeah, it's like you're att- you're attacking me, but in a way you're protecting Sammy. You know, you're saying, why are you mad at me? You should be mad at everybody or you should just let this go. And in reality, you should be saying, why aren't you more mad at Sammy? You know, like mm-hmm. not so much why are you mad at me, but what is he doing that it makes you okay with this? But when I do it, somebody you've actively voted for, it's a problem. Now, not to say that James didn't realize that because he did target Owen this round, Um but, you know, that definitely should have been a red flag. Uh, you know, if he wasn't thinking along those lines, he should have been at that point. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's that's basically what we've uh, what we've got. The main conflict of the episode here um, This is, of course, the podcast where we rate the players from one to ten based on how well we think they're doing in the game. I feel like this season has been one of the toughest stock watch rating seasons that I've I've had so far since we've started doing this because I do just feel so lost sometimes on like where everybody is w- with everything. Yeah, it's hard to know their motivations because it feels like we're not getting a lot of their motivations. Uh, and so I, I've been looking at this season from the bottom up. So I'll look at like who is getting the most heat at any given time. And then mm-hmm. by the time I get to the top, I'm like, okay, these must be the safest people, right? So James's name has come up a couple of times. So I knew he wouldn't be at the top of my rankings. And then there's people like Gabler, whose name has gotten thrown down a bunch of times. Noel, whose name has gotten thrown around a few times. They had a really good episode where it's probably easier for me to kind of uh, mark their standings. And then there's some people who I haven't mentioned yet who's Name doesn't come up at all in any episode for any reason at all, except for like, we really want to work with them or I have an advantage. And so I'm thinking those people might be at the top. Yeah. Uh, I think another big thing to talk about in this episode is Noelle and her plan to use the steal a vote to throw James off of her scent. Um, This confused me. Not like the plan itself, because I get it. We use the steal a vote on Owen as as you told him, makes it seem like you're making sure Owen can't use his shot in the dark, making it seem like he's dead in the water, and that makes James feel like you're even more on his side. He's not going to get scared and play his uh, knowledge as power. Um, my confusion came from, like, why do you need to do that in the first place? Like, was he nervous? Was he Was he telling Carla, like, I might use my knowledge as power? And if so, what and who was he going to use it on? Like, was he going to use it on her steal a vote uh, to to try and get that vote and ensure that he has the votes to take out Owen? There wasn't any other like advantages in play other than Carla's idol, which he may or may not know about. So I, I it was a little confusing. Like, what was the I, like? It worked, and it was like a good good play, I guess. But I my I think my main thing was just like. What was the purpose to begin with if the point is that he needed to be tricked anyway? I think that it's something that they didn't mention in the episode, which is mm. there's still a possibility that James has an idol, right? So if if Noelle goes and she does the steal a vote on James, right? I'm going to take James's vote. We're going to vote out James because that would be the typical way a steal a vote would probably be used, right? Um, then at that point, James can say, oh, 
they're coming after me. I'm going to play my idol. But if you say, I'm taking Owen's vote. So he does, So James is like, oh, okay, cool. Now Owen can't use his shot in the dark. It kind of lets his guard down. Now, we, of course, don't talk about James having an idol, but they don't know if he has one or not. We know, the viewers, that Carla has an idol, which also could be a good thing to be throwing them off because maybe Carla, which probably wouldn't happen, but there's a small chance that she could decide, I'm going to play my idol for James if I think he's not safe. Uh, they don't know about Carla's idol, but the fact that there are idols floating around, I think that you have to do whatever you can to make James feel comfortable in that moment uh, because he could still do the idol. So if you take the knowledge of the power out of, out of that equation altogether, it still makes sense. But the way they presented it on the episode, it did feel like they were saying like, if I use my steal a vote, James can then use his knowledge of power if he thinks it's on him. It's like, I don't think that's how it works. I think if you use your steal a vote at that point, James can't steal your steal a vote. Um, mm -hmm. So maybe that's what it is. How? What do you think about that? I mean, I think I think it makes sense. Again, like I, I think the like the plan makes sense if you really are nervous about James having knowledge of power, having potentially an idol, having you know whatever, and, and you're also you're concerned that like he's going to suss things out and that you need to like really put one over on him, then I, I can see why the idea of using this works. I think the the main thing is that she's maybe concerned that he will use knowledge as power to steal her steal a vote uh, mm -hmm. before she has a chance to use it. So she's like, I have to use it before he can take it from me so that it, you know nothing goes wrong. And then if I'm using it and I give my game away and he does have something else, then I'm screwed. So I need to use it and still keep myself under the radar. So I'll use it on Owen. And again, like I love, I love the idea of it. Like it's a cool move. Um, but at the end of the day, I still just kind of feel like, did she waste her steal a vote there? Like if she doesn't use her steal a vote, everything goes the same. No, like, uh, like there's nothing really changes much. I don't, it does at least from the episode, what they showed me. Yeah, let's think. So if she doesn't use a steal of vote, and let's say James isn't spooked into using his idol, then her and Owen and Sammy still vote for James. James and Carla would still vote for uh, for Owen and James would go home. But you're right. She would At that point, James would have the potential to use to, the knowledge of power to use her steal of vote if he felt like he was going to be voted out then. So yeah, I guess it didn't feel like they presented that like that in the episode too much, but there is a small chance that James could have been like, yeah, I don't know about this. Let me use the steal of vote. Steal the vote from her or Owen or whoever, and then just make sure that's one of them going home. I actually would have liked something a little bit sexier than that to happen. Uh, so here's my plan, right? Hear me out. I know it's crazy. So when Sammy goes and reveals this to Carla, I'm thinking Carla knows, or at least Sammy's telling us that Carla has him in her back pocket. Like she wants to work with Carla regardless of what happens here. He doesn't want her to be blindsided. Carla also has James from what we can tell. So I'm thinking, why would Carla just let James go to the wayside? So why didn't Carla tell James exactly what's going to happen? James, they're going to steal your vote. James then uses the knowledge of power to steal the steal of vote. He steals Owen's vote. And then let's vote out Noel. Why, why vote out Owen? What's he doing? Vote out Noel. She's right there. That way, Carla keeps Sammy, who she trusts. Uh, James, who she trusts. Uh, Noel is gone, who is obviously a strategic threat, uh, who had an advantage. And now you just have Owen kind of dead in the water. I, I would have liked that to happen. I think that's the Chappelle fan fiction that should have been written, unless you see a big hole in my plan. No, I think, I mean, that's the thing. I think Carla absolutely has the opportunity to save James without even playing her idol on him there. Uh, mm -hmm. Like, Carla is actively making the decision to send James out here. Her hands are not tied. And it's not even like, oh, well, she didn't play her idol on him because she didn't want to waste her idol. It's, no, she didn't even let him know that he should use his power to save himself. Um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'm assuming that's, I'm assuming she didn't, like, wasn't somehow kept in the dark about the steal of vote idea in the first place right so like uh yeah. she had to have known the plan james knew the plan uh so yeah she absolutely had the ability to tip james off and let him save himself so she was actively making the decision to cut him here um and and and, and this is the thing about the plan too if i'm james and and this is potentially like you know uh just hindsight or whatever but even as i was watching on stream when she approaches James with the idea of I'm going to use the steal a vote on Owen to make sure he doesn't play his um, shot in the dark. Um, my first instinct is going to be, oh, right, steal a vote. Um, that means that she's going to control between her and Sammy three votes, which means mm -hmm. she can do whatever she wants with this steal a vote. 
Steel Vote's very powerful at the final at, at a final five situation. Um, knowledge is power, not actually that powerful anymore because everybody assumes I have it and they're all playing Secret Santa with their uh, advantages. So if I actually know for sure that she's had, unless she's playing me and she's not holding it, which is what I thought she was doing initially, um, then this is an opportunity for me to be like, you know what? Let me just get rid of my thing. Look, I'm just going to steal your steal a vote and I'm going to do the same thing you were going to do. I'm going to take Owen's vote. We're going to vote Owen out. This wasn't an attack on you. I just wanted to burn my thing too. Uh, and now I don't have knowledge as power anymore. Uh, you don't have to worry about that. And I, I'm just like, uh, you know, essentially just controlling the vote in a, in a very vulnerable position uh, using this advantage um, and making sure that nothing can, nothing wrong can happen. And she's probably not going to be pleased, but she was planning to vote him out anyway. So uh, even if she wasn't planning to vote him out, it's like, whatever. Uh, like I just survived this it, like, very publicly. dangerous spot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think, I think, yeah, I think, um, we can talk about that. Like you said, it's hindsight and we're, we're watching it firing on all cylinders, sitting on our couches for well fed and after sleeping mm. a lot. But yeah, I think in that moment, if like, if he had time to really focus on it, maybe it's something to do with the time between each tribal council being so much shorter because it's only what 26 days or whatever. Um, but I think if he had more time to think about it, he would probably say like, why would I leave this in her hands? Like once she steals that vote, Sure, we say we want Owen out, but this is Survivor. People lie about that all the time. And if we really want Owen out, let me do it. Why can't I be the one to do it? Uh, I think he trusted her too much or he just hated Owen in the game that much more, you know, where he was that comfortable. Like, there's no way Owen's staying. It's either me or him anyway. He's got to go. And I'm thinking, even in that scenario, James, do you really got to vote out Owen? I mean, like, Owen's still, like, you know he's coming for you, but you don't really have a lot of power. You could get rid of Noel, or at least, like you said, at the very least, burn her um, her advantage. I think both of them are very sexy moves, but I think they might put a target on your back later on, but at least you survived the round. And I think ultimately that's all you can really count on in this game now because surviving the round means you might make it into the next do or die twist or something like that. So, you know, who knows what happens next week? They might shuffle you up again. You have no clue in the new era of Survivor. So I think, yeah, being paramount should have been making sure you have control over your own destiny and not leaving it in the hands of somebody who you're clearly not aligned with. You blindsided Noel, I think, twice at this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Like, uh, as far as I'm aware, the relationship between Noel and James and Noel and Carla even, not not very big. Uh, like, there's not much connective tissue there. So knowing that she gets a guaranteed two votes uh, is just so concerning. And by the time she uses it, too, like, what if she did use it? Just go ahead and use it on James. There's nothing he can do at that point. Uh, so, like, if I'm James, I'm going to, like, the second I get to tribal, I'm just, like, insta being like, uh, uh, J Jeff, um, <laughs> I would like to make sure that I guarantee my safety here. If I have a steal a vote, I should be guaranteed safe, assuming Carla hasn't turned on me. Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, and so maybe he would have done that. Maybe he still would have been voted out at that point. Uh, because if Carla still votes him out, it's still three to two. Um, but uh, that would have been my thought process because this is such a dangerous point. You know, splitting the tribe, splitting the merged tribe into two presents an opportunity for you to be voted out that wouldn't have existed otherwise. And surviving this round for me is absolutely worth burning an advantage. Just to, even if you're not sure, even if it's just like a little bit. I'm going to use an idol. I'm going to use my knowledge, especially if it's something like knowledge is power that everybody knows about or a steal of vote. Like I'm going to be using those like side advantages for sure in this spot. So just make sure I get past this tough like uh, crossroads. Yeah, we sometimes in, in Big Brother and in Survivor, we get this like, oh, this one person thinks they're running the game. They're the godfather. We get that edit a lot um, in these shows. But I think this time it might have been very accurate because I don't think there's any reason why James should have believed Noel. Like uh, based on y'all's like current, like previous relationship, you shouldn't have thought that Noel would be so easily turning on Owen. There's no point uh, for her to even think that she could work with you long term or for you to think you should work with her. So, yeah, uh, you have every reason to be suspicious of these people. Um, you have an advantage that everybody knows about, and they're actively trying to protect against every uh, episode. They're shuffling stuff around. You know, you really don't need it that bad. Uh, go ahead and try to play it and see what happens. And then 
deal with Noel next week if she's upset or tomorrow, I guess. If she's upset, uh, what's she going to do? You know, not, what's she going to do that she wasn't going to do to you anyway, right? So, yeah, I think you have a good point. But, you know, it's a tough spot to kind of see all the pieces. There's so much going on. They're protecting against idols and still of votes and, and, you know, uh, wacky phrases that aren't in this season, but they don't know that. So, you know, like, there's a lot going on. I'd like to extend some grace, but I really do just think he was uh, a little bit uh, feeling his own, like, power and didn't think that the walls could come crash crashing down as quickly. He also said something weird on the way out, like, oh, see how far y'all make it without me or something like that. It's like, what does that mean? Do you think you're aligned with all these people? Because clearly you, you weren't. Like, it's, it's just really Carla that had your back here. And we don't even know that because they only read three votes. So, I mean, I don't know. I, mean, I didn't I, check the font. I'm, <laughs> but... I'm assuming, I'm pretty sure Carla voted, uh, voted against him here. Yeah, um, she didn't even have to though. You know what I'm saying? Like she could have just been like, "Oh no, I was wrong. What am I doing?" You know, like there's three votes get read, and she could just like kind of play dumb. <laughs> well, I think I think that I think that everybody on Survivor knows that like if there were two votes for James or or if there were two votes for Owen, they both would have. They would have read. read both. I'd lie, um, just lie. <laughs> be like, you can't prove that. I don't know. Yeah, I don't about? know why. I don't know why I didn't read the votes. I yeah, I, I literally voted for you. I don't know when it's, it's what yeah. they made trying to make like. Oh, this is oh reality TV. You you know you always you know, hear about them being deceptive, but <laughs> yeah, just for the suspense. Because if he's on the if he's on the jury and I'm at the final tribal council, James, I had no clue. What are you talking about? What are you? No, these people they're lying. I would have never voted you out. I told them I was gonna vote you out, but there were only read three votes. Two of them <laughs> with Owens and Noel. So what are you talking about? Sammy betrayed you. Don't give him the money. I don't know. You're probably right. Uh, it's a little too cute. But at this point, what else do you have? You know, um, it's five people left. You just need to make it through this round and deal with the rest later. Yeah. Um, so how do we feel about the Carla move? Because it's obviously like, again, she had the ability to save James here. She decides not to. Um, I don't hate the move. I'm Again, I'm, I'm not usually on board with like intentionally sacrificing an ally. But James had been accumulating a lot of heat, which is not good. Uh, and it's also not good. Like if she gets to the end with him, he's going to get a lot of credit because there was so much heat on him. Um, and if she tips him off and lets him use knowledge as power to steal the steal a vote to save himself, that's just another big move on his resume that she's going to have to con uh, contend with. And maybe even like she's going to have to take him out eventually before the final three, because maybe he can beat her. Um, not necessarily, uh, especially with, you know, how juries have been going. Her social relationships might have been able to overcome that. Um, but it's maybe not something that she wants to take a risk with, especially if James does have other good social relationships. Um, and then on the other side of things, too, she's able to to maintain her connection to Sammy in a way that he really feels like I've got her. It also makes her seem weaker, uh, like James is no longer there, and she has a lot of those good relationships. So a really good player could use this position to really just like lock something really beneficial in. But it will take work, right? Like she has to come back to Jesse and Cody and be like, hey, I'm still with you guys. Um, she has to pick Cassidy back up. She has to pull Sammy still in, like, I'm, hey, I'm still with you. Um, she has the ability to do all those things, but losing James is definitely like she's lost a, a huge target that is that had been drawing heat. Uh, and it's, in my view, like a riskier play to get rid of James here than to let James save himself, continue to be this lightning rod. Um, but if she's skilled enough, I think it could work out better in the long term. Right. I think you make a good point about like if she's skilled enough, it can work better because that's a position a lot of times players find themselves in. Like, oh, my ally that everybody knows that I'm with goes home. They were this big, powerful player. Now I'm the weak leftover person who everybody's mm -hmm. trying to pick up. But I don't think you put yourself in that position a lot of times. Like that's like you said, you don't weaken yourself by getting rid of an ally. I think James was a huge lightning rod, a big shield for her. And that if anybody's going to target somebody, it's going to be James. I even think about like the tribal council that we just saw with the five of them. Carla was immune. Had James been immune? Carla, this conversation would have been about you. Um, it's either going to be Owen, Sammy, or Noel. We don't have any reason to believe that Noel would turn on Owen, except for what she gave them this episode, which is I'll turn on Owen. Uh, and then you have Sammy, who apparently is very loyal to Carla, 
But if you can't get if he can't get James, where else does he go? Does he go after Noel at that point? And if so, what does that benefit him? So I think that, yeah, I think she might have made a mistake because she does have one less person in front of her when it comes to this stuff. But like you said, if she's skilled enough, she can go back to them and be like, I have nothing like that was my number one ally or all I have now is you all, you know, keep me as a number. I'll be a part of this team. Now, I just don't think you put yourself in that position knowingly. So, uh, like, if she did that, that's amazing. And if it works out for her, great. That's, a, like, a, you know, an all-time move. But I definitely think it's very risky because I'm always saying, you keep your allies ar around. She had no reason to that point that we saw to believe that James would ever turn on her. Um, they called James, Cassidy, and Carla the, the three-headed Hydra um, at some point. You know, I think Gabler called them that. And then you have Sammy who's saying, I want to work with Carla. I don't want to blindside her. So I'm thinking she was in a pretty good spot uh, losing Owen or Noel here, specifically Noel, probably. Uh, I don't think that would have hurt her at all. I think if she could have kept those good graces going into the next week, there still would have been heat on James. James and Owen are still going at each other. Those two people are never going to get on the same page and say, you know what, let's put out Carla. But she could definitely go to uh, Owen and say, okay, I think it's time to get out, James. And he'd go for it. So I don't know. I think, uh, yeah, this is a, an interesting move. I don't. It's fine, but I think it could have been better. Yeah, it's it's interesting because like it, it's it's again it's it's like it, it's like going for a shortcut in Mario Kart or something. Uh, you know, it's like it's gonna be trickier to to land this right, but if you do, like it's more impressive and it will probably like propel you to uh like a a much more advantageous position. Uh, because you're right, like you don't usually put yourself in this position, but it can be a beneficial position and. And there is sort of like a meta strategy in Survivor right now, which is like lop the head off of the one that sticks up the highest. And at this time, it was looking like Carla, James, and Cassidy were kind of like the the big heads that were sticking up with James being the highest. We've now lopped off James's head. Uh, and I think that Carla can now safely duck back down Still with an idol that apparently nobody knows about, even though they should know about it because of the whole bead thing. I still don't know if they don't know for sure, but it seems like they don't know. But either way, a secret, potentially potentially secret idol with a bunch of great connections still, and she looks weakened. And I think that she can really play this to her advantage, again, if she lands it right. Um... And it's not like there weren't risks going the other way either. Like if you tip James off, then does Sammy get mad? Does he see through it and go, hey, you you know, you you took the information I gave you and you, you, you played me. Um, that wouldn't be great. You might lose Sammy. But I think there's a way to do that too and, and, and not lose Sammy. And I think that you can keep James around and use him as a shield as well. So I think there's that's the sort of like the easier and safer play. Um, but this for me is a move that like, I'm just going to have to wait and see how Carla mm -hmm. handles it moving forward because if she doesn't have the chops to like maneuver this tricky spot, then I'm going to say, yeah, in, in hindsight, I think that was a mistake. But if she does, I'm going to be like, interesting. I like yeah. this. The shortcut analogy is really good, especially for Mario Kart. You know, I'm thinking of uh, is that Koopa Trooper Beach where you have that <laughs> one like that, that wall that you got to jump through. I suck at games. You know this. And so I hit that wall every time. Right. And so when I hit the wall, I'm like, God damn it, I'm going to lose the game. But also now that I'm in last place, I'm going to get the cool stuff. And so uh, <laughs> I might get some red shells. And I'm thinking that that's kind of more of how I was looking at it. Like Carla slowed down potentially to get behind some people so that she could get a red shell and then potentially like blast everybody out the way. The question is, can you catch up to the people enough? Or are you even going to get the red shells? Or are you just going to be stuck back there with some bananas you can't use? Uh, or, you know, some of those little decoy uh, item boxes things. So, yeah, I, I agree with you there. It's risky, and it's going to really, like, determine, you know, be determined by how it works out. Um, I don't think she would have lost Sammy by just being like, Sammy, no. Um, mm -hmm. You know, like, Sammy felt like – it if looked she, like Sammy was willing yeah, to risk, it, risk his spot for her, you know? Yeah, I mean, if she tells Sammy – if she's open about it and tells Sammy, no, we can't do this – uh, and he's okay with that, then yeah, I don't think she loses him. If it's if she goes behind his back to tell James without telling Sammy I'm doing it, uh, he probably sees through that. But again, I think you're right that like he clearly cared enough about the relationship to let her know um, and to to bring it to her, um, which means she probably can say no to it if she needs to. Uh, but I think even if she even if she does and he's okay with it, like 
you still that's still like you have to manage him properly and at some point he's gonna go okay when am i gonna get what i want because i tried last week i tried this week it keeps getting turned down um but it's interesting stuff and and it's again it's just like i would have loved to have heard more from carla about her thought process here why does she decide to turn on james because there's not really an explanation in the episode that i can see beyond just like well i could yeah like uh He's not, he's not that, like, he's a strong player. And eventually he has to go, why not now? It's kind of like the the thing we were presented. Like, uh, yeah, anybody could go. Why not him? I was like, uh, I don't think he's that well insulated. I really feel like Carla had better relationships with everybody. Maybe she didn't feel that way. And so she, maybe she felt like, you know, this was the time that she had to take the shot. Um, but yeah, and I, and I kind of wonder if there's a world where Carla can get that to James and then be oblivious, like act to Sammy and go, Sammy, I didn't know he was going to do that. Because for James, again, there's no reason James should be believing Noel in this moment. I just don't see it. I don't know how they made him so comfortable with the fact that Noel, who is at the bottom, would turn on Owen, who is at the bottom, by stealing his vote. Like, you don't have to do all of that, Noel. If y'all are both at the bottom, you just vote for Owen and call it a day. But the fact that she's willing to go all above and beyond, I think it should have been a red flag. He should have been like, what's going on here? Why is she so hell-bent on making sure Owen gets out? When it could easily just like she could just vote for Owen and there we don't have to do all this stuff. Maybe she think and she's saying to protect against the shot in the dark. So she knows. I think it's common knowledge at that point that Owen doesn't even have an idol. They're not saying I want to do this to make sure that if Owen plays his idol, you know, the vote doesn't go weird. No, they're saying Owen's not going to play an idol. He's going to play his shot in the dark and we got to protect against that. And for, you know, James to see Noel of all people saying that and being like, yeah, I trust that. Give her all the power over who goes home this week. That's a good move. I'm like, nah. I think uh, that's a mistake on James' part. So I think there is a world where Carla can tell James this. James can wake up and be like, you know what? You're right. I do need to just steal the steal a vote and do this myself. And then she could go back to Sam and be like, man, I, that's crazy. He sussed that out. Or, you know, uh, it's obvious that he was going to get there eventually. I think she could have played this one off. But again, we've seen so little of Carla's thought process throughout this episode about how she was going to go about this that it makes me, you know, like, when I think about my stock rating, it's like, yeah, she's in a good spot and people are talking about her like as a player they want to work with. But man, it would be nice to know her strategy moving forward because it just kind of seems like she's just kind of cruising, um, which isn't bad, but I'd like to hear about it, you know? Yeah, like I, I would love a confessional that's like, okay, if I vote out James, then maybe I can move forward with Sammy and Jesse and Cassidy. Oh, like, you know, like who are you planning to work with? What is your strategy? Like, these are things I want to know. Um, and, and I feel like I'm not even getting the basics. Like that's sort of like future stuff that, that they normally wouldn't show. But I feel like e this season, I'm not even getting the basics of like, what is an actual reason you're sending him home now? Like, uh, is it the argument with Owen? Does he getting too, uh, you know, like hot, you know, in terms of like the perception of him, like he's just too visible now. And you're like, I don't know if I can, if I can stick with this guy. I, I don't know what it is. Um, and on the other side of things with the other team uh we see that they vote out ryan over cassidy and they explain their reasons which are like well we might not want to vote out cassidy because then carla and james will be mad at us which wasn't a great reason for me in the first place but then they see that james has been voted out <laughs> they still vote out ryan so like was that the reason did you vote out ryan because you were worried carla would be mad if you voted cassidy or were, were there other reasons? Like, I, like I, I want to know. Right. Um, let's think about this. So if they don't vote out, like if they vote out Cassidy here, Carla's there and she's all alone. She probably flips to whatever's left of an alliance. So she goes with the people who just voted out James, um, Owen, uh, Noel, and then it would be what Gabler at that point. Well, and well, no, Gabler and Jesse were the other two on the other side, right? The people who who didn't. So it'd be Sammy. So I guess that would kind of put them in the minority if Carla decides that she doesn't want to work with them anymore. But they're gonna be in a minority anyway. Um, so I guess they like, oh, we keep Cassidy, use Carla to bring so it'd be me, Cassidy, Carla, and then Gabler, and then that's it from you know, um Jesse's point of view, I guess. It's it's complicated because like like you said, they only explain it like, well, we don't really want to make Carla mad. And to that, I say, well, then vote her out. You know, like uh, you right. get another, like vote her out next week. It's fine. Um, if everybody loves her so much, then people would be open to it. Like that's the thing with Survivor. There's people who everybody loves, and then there's people who people love so much that if you actually bring up their name, people say, yeah, that person can go. Um, 
I assume they are trying to build like a new alliance. Now that James is gone, they feel like maybe she's been weakened. They could pick up Cassidy a little bit more or it'll be the two of them and Cassidy and Carla to kind of march forward. But they don't give us a lot of explanation. It really just felt like, like, oh, if Carla comes back, what is she going to say? You know, or how is that going to look if we, you know, do such and such? Even Carla was saying that. If we vote out James, what is that going to look like to the rest of them? Like, Cassidy's going to be pissed. It's like, okay. You know, um, if that's what you're worried about, then fine. But I really wish there was more motivation to that. At least tell me what you plan on doing next. I don't think we saw a lot of, okay, well, mm -hmm. that's done. Now what are we going to do? And we got to wait a week for that. So I guess we'll just wait and see what happens. I mean, like, my thought process was was the opposite. Like, okay, if, if, <clears throat> if I'm worried about Carla and James having power – and they're mad at me, and they might do something about it, then that means that if James is voted out, then I feel better about keeping Cassidy because she's already lost James. So I don't need to, I don't need to worry as much about giving her a little more power. Um, mm. She just potentially lost a battle. I can give her a win over here, pull her and Cassidy in. Like, that makes sense to me, but it goes against what they said their reasoning was prior to the vote, which is like, I don't want to piss them off. Uh, and if it's if I'm worried about pissing them off, James leaving makes me feel better about pissing them off because now it's just Carla. Uh, if mm -hmm. I vote out Cassidy, it's literally just her. And if if she's mad, then she can be mad all she wants. Um, so uh, I, I'm assuming that but but obviously, like their decision to vote out Ryan instead of Cassidy it seems like it was not informed by the decision, to, the, the, the like the fact that James left seems like they'd already stick um uh come up with that plan ahead of time like we didn't I, at least i didn't catch any sort of like meaningful glances in the edit to be like oh, james is gone therefore we must mm -hmm. um in, in fact the they seem you know? yeah they seemed very <laughs> surprised that james was gone uh and you would think that something that it was that like uh low variant like low chance of happening that they would have had some kind of like way to communicate like okay we are actually switching the plan i can't believe this happened um so it seemed like they had come to that conclusion already. And I don't really know why, because to me, it, it kind of seems like a mistake. Uh, and I feel like this happens a lot with Jesse and Cody is that they're making moves. And I'm just like, why does this make sense for you? Because to, in my eyes, Ryan is just a bro that wants a home. Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, old Coco, they kind of kicked him out. They, they turned on him for Cassidy. And if these two bros, Jesse and Cody, came came up to Ryan and was like, hey, Ryan, we want to bro down. Let's do this. Uh, I feel like Ryan would be down and I feel like he'd be voting with them. No, uh, I feel like he's a more solid vote than Gabler, uh, mm -hmm. who is like wild card extraordinaire. Uh, so why not go to Ryan, make that pitch and vote out Cassidy and just be like, uh, especially once you see James is gone and then be like, yeah, sorry, Carla, but, uh, you know, we were all in a big group together, you know, with Ryan and, you know, like uh, we weren't sure we were going to be able to get, uh, you know, Gabler on board because he's such a wild card. So uh, we had to make sure we had Ryan uh, like, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, with James on the jury and then if you send Cassidy to the jury and now you have Ryan as a solid number three. You probably have Gabler at that point because he's been hanging out with you and he doesn't really have a lot of agency in the game. Um I don't think that's a bad final three for y'all. You know, if y'all plan on going to the final two yeah. together, which for either of them, I think that would probably be like, okay, interesting decision. And don't but, forget, they have two idols between the two of them. Right. And if you need Ryan as a final three, like, I don't think he's getting the votes over y'all. You know, mm -hmm. uh, I think that's like probably the person that I would be looking at as my goat of all these people. Your goat is either going to be um, him or Gabler. And it's kind of like, at least he's catching fish, you know? Um, so I, I don't know. And like you said, Gabler's kind of a wild card. I think it was a mistake to get rid of Ryan. I always think it's a mistake, though, to get rid of, like, the person who's probably not going to take your spot and also not going to try to take you out. And yeah. I don't think he was going. He was either of those things for them. Now, there are some people who should be getting Ryan out because if he just bros his way to the end, then that's a spot they're not going to be able to ease their way into, especially once he starts winning challenges. It's bound to happen just because of his build. And we know how physical some of the challenges just get um but those two don't seem like they would be threatened by ryan at all i don't see any world where he would even vote for them uh like to get them out like he he wanted cassidy out give him this take out cassidy why not it'll like solidify him with you all a little bit more um 
James is gone, so it's not like Carla can retaliate against y'all. You actually have more numbers than you ever had in the game. So I don't know. I, I think it's an interesting decision. Uh, it just really feels like people just really want to work with Carla. They're like, you know what? We got to torch this guy to keep Cassidy good so that we can keep Carla. That's great. And that says a lot about Carla, a lot more about Carla than it says about them, I'd say. Yeah. All right. Should we rate these players? Sure. All right, let's do it. This is, of course, the portion of the podcast where we rate the players from 1 to 10 based on how well we think they're doing in the game. But, of course, we have no idea, especially with this season, especially <laughs> this edit. Uh, so we will do our best. Uh, here are the final 12 players. Two of them have been eliminated, al eliminated already. Uh, and, uh, of course, uh, two more have been voted out in this very episode, the first of which, of course, was James. Um, Man, I I do I think James did not play this round very well. He had the ability to save himself. He did not use it. Uh, even Carla turns on him, which I think is particularly damning that he didn't even have his one ally uh, holding true, giving a sympathy vote, or even giving him the information he needed to save himself. Um, that said, uh, I don't think I would go quite as low as a one because I don't think that like he actively tanked his own chances a hundred percent in this episode alone. I just think that he made some mistakes, didn't play it as well as I would like him to. Uh, so for me, I think James is like around a two for this episode. Oh man, this is tough. Cause I want to go lower than that, but I agree. Um, the reason why I want to go lower is just because I feel like there's no reason why he should have fell for this plan. I think the moment Noel comes to him and says, okay, I'm going to actively help you get out Owen for no reason just because I want Owen gone all of a sudden, it mm -hmm. really doesn't make any sense to me. Like, I think he let his anger and his emotions kind of get the better of him because I, I think he should have looked at Noel and been like, yeah, I hear you, but, you know, thank you? You know, like, what, what is that about? Why do you want Why do you want Owen out? Like, how does that benefit you? And I'm not quite sure it it, it does. And I don't think he should have thought it, it, it benefited him. We saw Jesse vote out Dwight a couple, you know, episodes ago. And it was a, a lot of questions about, like, why is he voting out Dwight? But he had betrayed Dwight before. So once you start betraying people, you really have to assume that this person has a reason not to trust me. Maybe they don't, and they're just playing along with it. So I'm okay with something like that. Um, James was betrayed uh, or well, betrayed uh, Noel or whatever, at least once in the game. And he's like, yeah, I'm sure she's with me. I don't think so. I don't think you should have fallen for that. I'll give him a two to be nice, but I have reason to give him a one. I could see that. And especially because, uh, Owen outplayed him. Noel outplayed him too, uh, too, but Owen did from like the weakest position in the tribe. He really flipped this whole thing on James in a situation where James shouldn't have even been the ire of his, uh, like his, of his anger, like not solely. James just fell for it after a tribal council. Immediately he goes and he's just like, you know what? I know I just got blindsided, but James lied to me. And James is like, yeah, yeah, I lied to you, but we weren't really working together. And they're like, no, James, you dirty player. Oh, my God. And next thing you know, he's gone. So it's like, you let Owen get the jump on you. I'm not uh, – it wasn't impressive for me, but I, I can't hate on my guy. I was really rooting for James in this season, so I'll give him a two. All right. Uh, what about Ryan, Chappelle? How do you feel about Ryan in this episode? <sighs> what could Ryan have done? If this is Ryan being Ryan. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. it was just Ryan being Ryan. I don't know if I can, like, hold that against him. I think maybe, like – uh, and we've talked about this in the stock watch before, uh, especially when it comes to Big Brother. There are players that you have a higher potential for. Like this player can is capable of doing these things, so I can rate them a little bit harder. They get higher highs, but also when they do smaller things, I got to deduct for that thing. Uh, and that's kind of how I was looking at the James thing. Like you shouldn't have fallen for this. Ryan definitely should have fallen for this. This is Ryan. You know, like this is kind of his mo. I, I want to go catch fish and be kind of inoffensive. Uh, for him to all of, all, all of a sudden be a strategic mastermind in this moment, I don't expect that of him. Um, they both went home. I'm sad to see them both go, especially because I drafted Ryan. Uh, so I'd give Ryan a two as well. But again, an argument could be made to go lower. I just think he just did what Ryan was going to do in any situation. And the, you know, the pin just dropped and it landed on him. Yeah, I think I think I'll be a little more uh, sympathetic to to Ryan uh, in this spot. I think that like he didn't make as many mistakes. I think as James does here, he doesn't have the ability to save himself and fails to in the same way that James did. Uh, I think he comes in from a lower position, um, and also I think that 
unlike James, who I think probably would have been a, a pretty significant target this round, regardless of the half and half split. Um, and maybe it wouldn't have worked if that had been the case. Uh, but I think he still would have been looked at as a big target. Uh, I do think Ryan really got this, took the brunt of this, that if this hadn't been uh, this group with this many people, he probably would have been able to skate by a couple more rounds um, at the very least and and not been in as much trouble. Um, maybe not. And and it's not like he, again, he, yeah, I think you're right. He had the lower kind of like uh, ceiling in terms of his potential of where he's going to, I don't think he was ever really going to win this game. But in terms of this episode, I don't think it was as bad an episode for Ryan. Uh, it's it's it was like I mean, this is the boot episode for Ryan. It's like it, not even his third or fourth worst episode of the season. Uh, like he's had much worse episodes than this one. So uh, for me, I think uh, think around a three for Ryan makes uh, makes sense. Um, yeah that's fair that's fair uh, yeah i just yeah this was probably a decent episode for him which is funny <laughs> um but also uh he went home so what can you do uh this is yeah. one of those moments where we wish i wish we could have seen more of what it was but i feel like if they showed us more of ryan he would have just been catching fish oh yeah that's true he would have been he would have been just uh catching as many fish as uh as possible um Yeah, that's it. Hey, yeah. that's him. That's his thing. He catches fish. So, I mean, the best he could do was catch fish. He caught fish. He still went home. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? All right. Let's talk about the first tribal we saw. I think it was the more interesting one. Um, let's start with uh, let's start with Sammy, who makes an interesting decision in this episode because Sammy said he, he was talking last week about I got to make a move. I got to make a move. It's got to happen. I got to take out Ryan because he's the easiest person to take out of these numbers. Um, it doesn't go through. I still don't know why it didn't go through other than like maybe it was too last minute to try to throw together. Maybe they really didn't know that Cassidy voted that way. Whatever. Um, he tries and he fails. And remember last week, if you listen to last week, I said specifically, if I am James, I am worried about Sammy because he just tried to do something and it didn't work. Now I'm going to be worried about him, which means coming into this episode, he should have been more worried about Sammy. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, Sammy comes into this episode. He says, I want to make a move. Um, it seems like all the pieces are in place to make the move. And he decides to go to Carla. And this could have blown the move up, but he trusts Carla and he wants to make sure he doesn't lose Carla as an ally. Um, this to me is one of those things where you see him do it and you go, what are you doing, you idiot? But I kind of have to be a little results-oriented about it because by going to Carla first and legitimately flipping Carla and getting her to agree with the plan, he has now fully kept Carla as an ally. Like, she is fully mm -hmm. still on board with him. Whereas if he had done the Tony and done this behind her back and then gone back to her might have been more difficult to keep her on board. And that's the kind of thing you just have to know. You just have to yeah. know your relationship and know what you're able to pull off before you go there. And if you're wrong, you're going to look like an idiot. But Sammy wasn't wrong. He succeeded here. And I have to give him some props for that. Uh, so he manages to pull off both getting out James and keeping Carla around as a solid ally. Um, now, I don't know how Owen and, and Noel feel about Carla getting on board. I don't know how they feel about, like, did they know that he was going to Carla? Now that Carla voted with them, are they going to be like, why did Carla vote with us? Are they going to, is that going to expose their relationship? There are definitely some downsides to this. I don't, still don't know where Sammy goes from here. But uh, I do think that uh, overall, I have to give him some credit for pulling this off. Uh, I'm going to give him like a seven. Yeah, I agree with you on that you have to look at it results oriented because we don't see enough to know if this was a good plan for him. Right. We just know it works out. Like if this was big brother, we would have saw everything. And we'd be like, mm -hmm. why are you telling them this? They don't trust you like that. You know, like yeah. we know that she doesn't like that. She's going to take this information and do X, Y, Z with it. But since we don't know that 
we have to take what we you see at face value and see that he went to her, it worked, so that relationship must have been there. That's all we can go by. And so since he utilized a relationship that he did have and used it to his advantage to get out somebody he saw as a threat, yeah, I think it's a good move for Sammy. But the issue with Sammy is that I can never identify Sammy's allies in the game. Uh, yeah. He feels like he feels like he's like a lone wolf, like he has no allies. Now, it's clear that he wants Carla to be his ally. But even then, I don't know if that's enough to move through the game with because Carla has so many allies in the game. Um, like Jesse is her number one for sure. Cassidy is one of her number ones. James was one of her number ones as well. Um, I'm sure after this one, she'll have a pretty decent relationship with Owen. You know, um, it's tough. So I that's why I'm always like kind of like, hmm, I don't know how I feel about Sammy. Also, I think it's kind of messy. You know, like you said, um, he re- he has now done this. It might get back to them. Um, but I think for him, he identified his target. He got his target out this week. And a lot of it was, and he managed to keep um, an ally in doing that. So I think a seven is probably about right. A part of it kind of wants to go a little bit higher, but I just don't know who is at his path to the end right now, um, especially with the way he's bouncing around. Uh, I'm going to have to see a little bit more before I can go higher than a seven. Yeah, it's just, again, I think part of the reason why Sammy's been so difficult to rate and other people have been so difficult to rate is because there's not enough information on, uh, on like, what he what his plans are. Like, where where is he moving for? Is he, is he getting the gang back together? Is he going, like, hey, it's me, Carla Gabler? Um, you know, like, I, I don't know. Um, but, uh, but that's where Sammy is right now. Uh, let's talk about Owen who manages to survive this vote. Um, definitely good, a good episode for Owen in that he survives. Um, I don't love the argument with James. Uh, I think that like, I think that, you know, you're out on an Island, you're starving. Uh, you're not getting a, a lot of sleep. People are lying to your face. Uh, his patient level. I, th- I think he just, he ran out of patience um and uh, couldn't hold it in and hey it might have helped him maybe the argument with james is what helped tip carla over the edge uh to not help uh not give him the information he needed to save himself but i also don't love it overall as like uh okay now james is uh on the jury one of the first people on the jury he did have some good relationships he's probably pretty decently respected on the jury is he now going to be pretty anti owen because he feels like owen is a like a spoil sport Mm, good question um yeah this is tough for me because i want to rank owen's like position in the game but i also want to rank this episode for owen separately Mm. uh because i think owen was at the bottom of whatever whatever machination this was going to be i think in both if in any situation i think owen probably would have been toward the bottom of the totem pole um and he survived so i want to give him a lot of credit for that Um, there's a moment in Survivor Pearl Islands where Sandra and Krista are at the bottom of their alliance. They just got blindsided. I think Rupert goes home or something like that. And Sandra goes and she takes the fish. She's so pissed. She's like, oh, no one's eating Rupert's fish. She drops the fish. They find the fish. And then they're like, Krista, you did this. And Sandra's Mm -hmm. like, oh, shit. And she just lets it happen, right? She lets Krista go home. She ends up winning the game, this, that, and other. Um, And it worked out for her. Her anger got the better of her, but it did work out. But I don't think that was by design, obviously. Uh, and well, I and, think- and I think uh, importantly, she got away with it secretly. Like uh, mm-hmm. she took the anger out <laughs> secretly on the fish. Didn't get into like uh, any a confrontation. She got into other confrontations, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, and I think I think that that's kind of similar to what happened here with Owen. He lets anger get the the the, the better of him. Uh, he clearly had a short temper with James. He was not trying to play with James, and so I'm just like throughout the episode, I'm watching his stock fall because I'm like, you don't play like that. You know, this person, you want to try to win these people back over when they piss you off. You want to like be secretly mad at them and plot against them behind their back, but you don't want to be openly against this person. Uh, you can be openly with everybody else. Like, hey, everybody else needs to know I want this person out, but he doesn't need to know it because he's going to target you. But I think it works because it gives James a level of tunnel vision that I think he just didn't have before. This episode, he couldn't see past Owen. He could not see Noel standing there saying, I'm about to steal a vote and now have two of them and I can do whatever I want with the two of them. Wouldn't it be crazy if I did something else? And 
he just missed it because he was so worried about Owen. And I don't think Owen designed it like that by any means, but I do think it worked. Uh, and so that's why I have a, a struggle with this because, yeah, I don't think the gameplay was necessarily great from Owen, but he did what he did something where he could have just sat by and gotten picked off. He really did try to at least draw the line in the sand between him and James. It was very clear that it was going to be Owen or James as opposed to it just being Owen. Um, and so I want to give him credit for that, but I still don't love his position in the game at all. I mean, uh, I'm <laughs> listen, I picked Owen to win the game. <laughs> He's he is my last hope. So I would love to see him carve his way to the end, but I don't know how it happens. He doesn't have any advantages that I don't think at this point. He's I mean, hanging on by a thread. Oh, man. And I can't rank it as high as Sammy, who we've seen at least has allies in the game. And Carla, he's been able to make things happen on his own um, by flipping around. I don't know. I feel like maybe like a five, maybe, Taryn. What do you think? Yeah, I I think I think probably around a six. I, I feel like the for me, it's that like he succeeds in surviving and getting out James. So he no longer has the James issue in the game. <clears throat> um, he also, I think, isn't perceived. I think James is like the person that was really gunning for Owen. I don't think anybody else is really gunning for Owen. And I don't think anybody has an, much reason to. I don't think he's going to be seen as a big threat. I think Cody and and Jesse are going to be seen as big threats. I think that, um, you know, uh, Noel playing the steal a vote in the way that she did is going to be seen as a big threat. Um, I think. Even Sammy, to a degree, I think will be seen as as like a bigger threat. I think Owen can kind of blend back. It's it's final eight right now, so even just surviving a couple of weeks or a couple of rounds, I should say, uh, a couple of weeks is like the whole game. Um, <laughs> is uh is not bad, not bad for for Owen. So uh, I don't hate his position, especially because I do think that you know at least prior to the James stuff, I feel like he is somebody that could speak well at a final tribal uh about his game like he's so good in confessionals he's funny he knows the game really well um but now that he's had this thing with james you know i think he'll might he might have a little bit harder of a time um so overall i think around a six for me also we did learn theoretically why he didn't give uh janine the heads up about what was happening last episode to play her shot uh, in the dark is that apparently he learned it too last minute i guess to to tell her that she was going to be the one um, so, you know, that was something that I was like, why in the world did Owen, who had immunity, not at least give her a heads up that this was happening so she could try something? Uh, but that was probably why. But yeah, six for me for Owen. Yeah, I, I think you swayed me a bit because Gabler did tell Owen, you know, like that's the thing. Mm -hmm. um, Owen could have been blindsided last episode. And he was not. And in this episode, he, you know, got out one of his biggest opponents in the game. And then, like you said, if he goes to the end, I think it's very similar to, you know, Marianne being at the end or even Taylor being at the end of Big Brother. Like, you want this, per you don't want, like, it's more Marianne than Taylor, probably, just because you don't want this survivor super fan who's been watching the show their entire life to have this story of I was at the bottom getting blindsided, trying to hold on to the seven. And then I got out my number one ally by turning his ally against him with a steal of all crazy switch thing. Da, 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 da. And then I made my way to the end and he's sitting next to Gabler and Cody. He might have a really good shot, actually, you know, as far as articulating his game. Um, I just I just really wish he was in a better spot right now. So I was mm -hmm. like, I, I was thinking five, but I, I think you swayed me to six. I can I can do six for Owen, but I'm hoping all he right. wins. I, we need to keep the winner circle small. <laughs> uh, all right. Let's talk about Noel and uh, and her play this week. Um because man, uh, for me, I don't I don't know exactly what the the like tenor of the response is right now. I feel like I've seen a lot of like, oh, badass move because it was a badass move. I really I want to make this clear. I really like the move in a vacuum. Um, I think it was a really cool move, uh, but not in a vacuum. I I I'm not sure that I see it as much uh and that's because of two things one i think it might have been a waste of a steal of vote uh both in the sort of like results oriented way of thinking and that like i don't think she needed to use it they have they flipped even carla so they really didn't need to use it uh and also 
uh, in the like, I don't think that that they needed it to convince James that he was safe. It seemed like from the episode that he was convinced he was swayed. Again, if Sammy is able to flip Carla to vote James out, you really this plan really doesn't need to happen because Carla can make him feel safer. Uh, like anybody, like maybe she wouldn't want to, but like you have four votes at that point. Uh, and he only has knowledge as power. Even if he stole the steal a vote and used it himself, he still wouldn't have the votes to save himself. Uh, so it really just doesn't seem necessary in that sense. And it also, for me, is something, so it's like, okay, you didn't need to use it. You could hold on to it, use it at a later date. It might be useful to you later. Also, this is now the final eight. And I'm concerned that making a badass move heading into the final eight sticks your head up a bit too high. Uh, and you don't have any protection anymore. You don't have that steal a vote. You don't have many allies. Um, I'm just worried that Noelle is now has a reputation as like, you can't go to the end of Noelle. Like she's pulled off some crazy, awesome moves. Uh, and I don't think that's a good place to be. So if I'm able to survive this round without uh, needing to uh, to do something like that, then I'm going to take that route uh, if I can. Um, now again, like if I feel like I'm in any danger, I'm going to do it every time. Um, and maybe she did feel like she was in danger. Again, there's all kinds of reasons that could have been left out of the edit that make this make a lot more sense to me. Um, and, and I'm definitely giving space for that. And I'm also not saying that this was a bad move. Uh, I think that like, I think there was a, maybe a, a more optimal path, but in the end it was still a good, a, a great move that got her what she wanted, took out James, and now she is in a position where she probably does win if she makes it to the end. Uh, all she needs to do is get there. That's the hard part, but it was still a, a good episode for her. So um, so for me, I, I'm going to give her a, a seven um, because this was a good episode. It was a good move, but I, I'm, I'm not going to go too much higher because I'm concerned about her future prospects, and I don't know how necessary making the move was right now at this time yeah this is tough because we just gave sammy a seven and i feel like sammy has more allies in the game uh like mm -hmm. not like like real like real alliances like i was saying earlier like i don't know who he's like who his number ones are except for like carla but it doesn't seem like anybody else is really targeting him whereas noelle's name has come up several times throughout the game and she's also done this big thing now that could draw attention to her um, she doesn't have a lot of places to hide. She no longer has her advantage. So it, things aren't looking great. But I think this was a good episode for her. Um, obviously, like I said, Owen was the target. But if it wasn't Owen, could have been her. You know, like they could have decided halfway through, like, why are we taking out Owen? He has nothing. And, you know, and or, you know, if someone knows about her still a vote, then they could definitely be like, well, why don't we just take her out? Um, so, you know, deflecting from Owen and putting the target on somebody she's absolutely not working with in James. I think that's a good move. Um, so I'm going to go with seven as well, but it feels like it's not the same seven. I'm giving Sammy, like it's like seven ish, mm -hmm. you know, because I think, I think Sammy's in a stronger position, but I think um, Noah had the stronger episode. Yeah. I mean, for me, she's getting a boost from the episode to get her up, up there. And, and Sammy's also getting a boost, but uh, I think he's a little more solidly in that seven position right now. Um, all right, let's talk about Carla finally here on this, uh, in this, I don't remember if they were blue or red. Um, Carla, I think is going to maintain the top position for me. I mean, she's been pretty consistently the highest rated player all season long. It's again, though, like it's mostly because of the things we're hearing about Carla from other people that tell me that she's in such a good position. It's like, I know Carla's in a good spot because even when she's on the wrong side of a plan, Sammy is saying, I can't do this without Carla getting on board. I need to go to Carla and talk about it. Even when she's not even in the group, people are talking about her as a reason to do or not do something. Well, we can't vote out Cassidy because Carla will be mad at us. Um, that really shows just how much social influence she has in the game. The problem with I have with the season is that I'm not seeing it actively like used <laughs> that much like i'm not hearing what her thoughts are on this does she even recognize that she has this influence i assume so um i think she's playing that way but i'm just not getting enough to know exactly what her plan is uh we talked about this yet last week that like she was barely in the episode but it seemed like she had a presence beyond 
like actually physically being there. And it's the same thing in this episode where like, yeah, she was physically there to a degree, but she also wasn't the originator of this move. She kind of latched onto it at the last minute, seemingly, and she loses a, a main ally. But at the same time, we're hearing about all of this influence that she has in the game. And so I trust that she still has a big presence and that she probably has some kind of plan, but I just don't know what it is. So for now, uh, for me, it's it's an eight for Carla. Um, OK, I, I, I like that. Um, because you're right. I think no one has ever said her name in a negative light throughout this game. Yeah. And I think for that, I have to give her a major props because there's a reason to target anybody. And no one's been like, isn't Carla in a good spot? Why not her? You know, like she hasn't even been presented as a backup option to a backup option. Um, in this episode where she was potentially going to be blindsided, she had one of her, her uh, allies that we didn't even know was that close to her, like uh, come to her and save her from the blind side. Um, and so that relationship with Sammy really does help bolster her position for me because, like, I just didn't know that position was so strong with him. And that did save her. And sometimes that's all you need is somebody to key you in on the plan. I mean, if this had been Carla in danger, Sammy goes to her and tells her this probably, and she plays her idol, and then she's fine. And then she gets uh, kudos for, you know, playing a successful idol. Um, I'm looking at the board right now, and the only people who I could even see targeting her realistically are Noel and Owen. Right now, I mean, uh, maybe Gabler. She's not really working with him. But Sammy and Cody didn't make any decisions this round without thinking about her. Cassidy has been, like, uh, tied to her. Um, Sammy just went out of his way to, to go to bat for her. She's got a ton of allies. Um, I just really wish they were showing her as a more active player. She feels, she feels like such a defensive player. Like, she's gathering all these fortresses around her, but she's not actually utilizing them to move forward. Then she's just, like, letting pieces fall off of her, you know, mm -hmm. in different in different areas, which... I mean, that's a, a legitimate strategy in a lot of these games. It's just like uh, insulate yourself and then you make it to the end. Um, and so I really like that. I probably go give her, give her a nine uh, because she does have an idol. She hasn't been targeted. She hasn't been left out of any votes. She, um, she from what we can tell, is really good at uh, certain immunity challenges too, even with a hurt hand. It was very impressive. Uh, mm -hmm. And then, like I said, there's I've gotten almost no negative content from her. The one person who I know she was actively uh, like against was Ryan, and he's gone now. You know, um, so uh, great episode for her. Great season for her so far. What? I, and this is going to sound bad, but I kind of wish she had a little bit more opposition. I want to see what she does when people are coming for her, because I think she has the skills to uh, to dispatch some of these people. Um, it's like when you like kind of rate Kim Spradlin's game, right? And you're just like, she was just kind of hanging out, and everybody was like targeting each other, but they were all including her, like, oh, we all the girls, we're we're the girls alliance, and we got Kim, and then the like the makeshift guys alliance is like, okay, yeah, we'll come together, but we're gonna get Kim and Chelsea, and then it gets down to like the final three, and they're like, oh, we're all going to end with Kim. And you're thinking, what is Kim doing? She's like, I'm just winning idol, like finding idols and winning immunities and just kind of living my life, um, and voting out whoever I want to vote out. And I kind I kind of feel like Carla's in that same position, but you know. Um, I would like to see her more actively strate uh, strategizing against people and getting her targets out moving forward. I think if she was actively doing that in the game, I'd give her a 10 even because I, I just haven't found the flaw. So I'd give her a 9 right now just because I would like to see a little bit more. I just want them to maybe I want to see what she can do when she has a little opposition against her. Mm. All right. Well, let's move on then to uh, the other side, the other group. Uh, and let's talk about uh, the other person up for being voted out, potentially Cassidy. How do you feel about Cassidy, Chappelle? I feel like this wasn't a great episode for Cassidy because she could have easily gone home. Uh, I think it might have even been a better decision for her to go home. But the fact that they were willing to keep her around means something. Um, I, I haven't seen Cassidy very active in the game against many people either. I know she doesn't, uh, like, again, she doesn't love Ryan. Uh, and Ryan's gone. So she got her target out. Um, but I've heard her name come up in ways that I have not heard Carla's name come up. Uh, she seems like she did lose an ally this episode in James, but she does still have Ryan. Uh, I think tangentially because of her relationship with Carla, she probably has Sammy as well. Um, so she's not in a horrible position, but I wouldn't say she's in the same position as uh, Carla. If I had to, to give her a rating, it'd probably be an eight because it's definitely a better position than Noelle. Uh, if I if I step away from it, Noel, I feel is fighting from like a more vulnerable position than Cassidy. Cassidy mm -hmm. just has to maintain her position in, in the dominant alliance. Um, so I'd probably give her an eight if I'm giving Carla a nine. Yeah, uh, I I think I'd give her like a seven here. I think that um, 
you know, she's not really shown to be the mover uh, of like who saved her in this episode. It's not like she had like a fantastic episode. It was good in that she survived. And it was also very good in that Ryan is gone. Um, and so I think that those two things were very good. Um, but like in terms of an episode, it was kind of a quiet episode for her. Uh, but her position moving forward, I think, is really, really good because with Ryan gone, who's really going to be saying Cassidy's name? Shouldn't be anyone. Uh, at least I don't think so. She's maybe able Gabler. to yeah. <laughs> maybe Gabler. Uh, she's, she should be able to sort of like blend back in with, with Carla and her allies. Um, and I think that she, I think like, you know, I think that she has a great chance to just like slide in there. Um, the biggest issue, I think her biggest competition is Carla herself. Um, in that I think Carla probably has a better case to make at the end of the game. Uh, based on her like relationships, um, but if if Cassidy is able to get in there and outlast Carla, I think she has a great chance to actually win this whole thing. Um, the the problem is similar to most of the people in the game right now uh, that are like in decent spots. It's like I don't know what kind of influence she has to make sure that that happens. Um, but she should be in a decent spot moving forward. I think she has um, a, a a great like head for the game. Uh, she seems to have a good social game, even though she did have that thing with Ryan. So uh, overall, I, I really like Cassidy. I think she's in a a, a good spot. So uh, I think a seven works for me. All right. Cool. How about, let's see, let's go to Gabler next. Uh, how do we feel about Gabler just invited into a final three with Jesse and Cody. Um, and, uh, you know, he seemed to be pleased with it uh, at the time, at least. Uh, he goes along with voting out Ryan, which I, I mean, I guess is honestly, I actually think that was a mistake from Gabler. I mean, <laughs> what is he going to do? Like if, if Jesse and Cody want it, then there's not a lot he can do about it. Um, but it definitely would have been better for Gabler to keep Ryan around. I think I think Ryan is one of the few people that Gabler might have a, sh a shot at beating uh, in the end. Um, versus, you know, I think Cassidy would, would, would do really well against Gabler, but you know, it's, it's Gabler. Like, uh, I, I, I gotta give him some credit for being pulled into a, in a, an alliance, um, for not being in trouble this round. Nobody's like looking to take him out. I still don't think he has much of a chance to win the game, but this was a pretty decent episode for him overall. Um, in fact, the, like the fact that people are like actively looking to bring him in was like pretty solid. So uh, maybe I'll go with what might be my highest rating for Gabler in the entire season. I'm, I might give him a five. Yeah, I can see that. I I can see a five for him. Um, because yeah, it's like, uh, we talked about having that, that, that high of a ceiling. He's shown that he has teeth. If he wants you out, he's willing to go after you, but it's not the most, like it doesn't have the most finesse. Uh, and so that could of course lead to turning off a jury or even making you a target before you have to be. But going to getting a final three at this point is not horrible. I mean, you're at the final eight. So all you have to do is make it. Now, will you beat that final three? No, probably not. Um, but, you know, stranger things have happened. Uh, a few idle wins. I mean, a few idle finds or uh, like immunity wins might just turn the tide for somebody like Gabler. Um, I've been worried about Gabler since uh, the draft. You know, I was like, I don't know about this guy. And he is doing uh, relatively well. So I'm kind of shocked to see uh, that he uh, seems to be in a decent position. Um, but he's not in that core group. And so because he's not in that core group, I can't give him higher than a six. I'd go a five as well. Yeah, uh, I, I think this this might be the peak for Gabler just in terms of like, he's been lying low. Uh, the Al Gabler... And he went back down. Uh, and it's been, it has been working for him. And and I think that, like, people are starting to look at him as somebody they want to bring to the end. Again, I don't see him winning the game necessarily, but the fact that I think people are starting to look at him as a, a person to bring to the final three, it's like, you know, peaking at a five, I think, right now is about about it for me. And, and that's been successful. We'll see if he's able to break that barrier. Uh, you know, it seems like maybe he'll make a move next week. Uh if he's successful in that, maybe he does break that barrier. If not, then you know, he probably goes back down. Uh, but uh, but that's that's what I got for Gabler. Let's talk about Jesse and Cody. Um, <laughs> like at, at the same exact time, <laughs> we might as well. Like they're yeah. pretty much inseparable in this episode. Uh, you know, if I'm going to give an edge, I'll give it to to Jesse for having a secret idol that uh, that Cody does not have a secret idol. 
Um, and I think Jesse has a better social game overall, better connections. Um, but, uh, you know, Cody wins an immunity challenge here, which is, which is good. I think it shows that he can win these things. Um, and I think they're both in a pretty similar spot. They're both thinking, uh, very similarly playing the game together. The thing is, I just can't help but think it was a mistake to vote out Ryan over Cassidy. Yeah, I, I, I feel like having... Ryan and Gabler both in the game and thinking that they're going to the end with you is amazing because Ryan's not going to strategize to get you out. I feel like Gabler has no reason to think that you would pick Ryan over him, which is probably true. Uh, and so you keep both of those people around and you have a, a solid four right there, especially because you see James is out on the other side. You know, Carla's probably the uh, the biggest, your uh, you know, biggest opponent at that point. But who does she have that you can't potentially reel in? At this point, you could probably go get Owen if you wanted to. Um, there are a few people that you could really probably turn this the tide with if you have that solid four. Um, having a solid four at eight, not horrible. That I just I'm just saying. And so uh plus two yeah, idols. Having, plus two idols, right. And so and then a the potential immunity win, you know, al almost your whole team can be immune just based off of that. Um yeah, I just don't know about this one. Uh, and I don't think it was the best move for them just because there is so much room for them to build an army against players like um, Carla, like um, Owen, like even Sammy, who they who you can see is kind of moving around on his own. Um, so, yeah, I didn't love the Ryan thing. It just it just feels like I, I'm never going to be like vote out the guy who's not doing anything. Like just keep that guy around as long as you can, because as long as he ain't coming after you, whatever, you don't have to worry about him. Um, but they did. Um, so I kind of have to look at that move and just kind of say, okay, is it a net negative? Like I didn't, I didn't love it, but is it going to be something bad in the future? I guess we'll have to wait and see. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I definitely give Jesse the edge because of the unknown. I, I mean, the unknown idol and because we know that, um, he does have that really strong connection with Carla in a way that we have not heard Cody talk about anybody else in the game like that. Um, so I think whatever it is, they're going to have the same rating for me, uh, but it's going to be like Jesse's kind of like a, like a smidge over it. I just haven't yeah. decided what, what number, maybe eight, um, maybe set, maybe seven, even just after the, the vote out of Ryan. I can't, I was really hard for me to separate that move from how they've been doing in the game. Cause they've been doing phenomenal. Yeah. It's, it's, it's been so tough for me because they've consistently made m moves where I've been like, eh? like all the way back to the NECA decision. I was like, ah, eh? Uh, but it's been working out for them so far and being at the final eight as a duo, both of you have idols. It's a really good spot. Um, it's a very visible spot and you're probably going to be in some trouble, uh, especially because you just voted out a potential ally in my eyes, at least, but it is a pretty good spot and I've doubted them before and they've, they've come back. That said, I still feel like I can't go higher than a seven, especially because I do think this was a mistake. And it, it and I don't think it's a huge mistake necessarily. I don't think it was like, oh, what are you doing? This is definitely the wrong play. Um, but it, it, it it's it's just another move that feels to me like, oh, I feel like you could have gone one better. And if things go wrong for you next week, I can't help but think that you might have been in a better spot if you had done a different thing here. Um, so I think for me, sevens work uh, for Jesse and Cody. I, I'm definitely... You know, like, where do they go from here? Are they able to, like, if they're, basically, if they're able to link back up with Sammy and Carla, <clears throat> and they still have Cassidy, and maybe they have Gabler, maybe they don't have Gabler, and they're able to survive a round or two, that's when I'm like, okay, now they're in a really good spot. Like, if they, mm -hmm. if they miss their shot at eight and seven to take out Jesse and Cody, they're gonna have a really hard time taking them out. Um, but... Yeah they should be taking that shot. And I think a lot of them will probably probably start to see it, but who knows? Yeah, that's true. But with those idols in there, even if they try to take the shot, it'll be hard to hit them. Um, you know, so we will see. But I, I probably agree with you. Seven-ish for both of them. Like seven, probably mm -hmm. a solid seven for Cody. Um, and then like a seven-ish for Jesse. A little bit better just because of the secret advantage and the fact that at least I've heard him articulate that he has a strong relationship with somebody else, whereas Cody is just like vibing out there. And uh, I don't like that from an edit for the person who's going to win the game. Right. A vibing from Idaho. Yeah. He's just living with two exclamation points and a smiley face. <laughs> All right. Well, that was it. That's the stock watch. Hey, we did God. it.
the season is almost over, Terry. I, I, I didn't realize it was going so fast. That 26 days really changes stuff. Next week, it's going to be even faster because it's going to only, only be eight people. Well, I'll yeah. update the graphic. Yeah, this is wild. Um, it's been a fun season so far. I know people haven't loved the boot order because a lot of the women went home first. Uh, a lot of the minorities are going home. But as far as I'm concerned, I really enjoying it. Uh, like it's nothing been groundbreaking for me. I really think if if uh, Carla had pulled off the let Noel steal the uh, like let James know that Noel was gonna steal the steal you know all that stuff and then they would have got Noel out. I think that would have been an amazing move and I'd been yelling about it. Um, but everything's been kind of like tame you know it's been uh some good strategic play some good social moments so we've seen a lot of backstory but nothing that i've really have been wowed by yet i'm waiting on the wow moment i think uh last season had a lot more wow moments omer the stuff that he was doing without a vote mm -hmm. was incredible marianne herself even some of the more social issues that were coming up that was all entertaining television i don't think we've had a lot of that this uh this season so i want more of that but overall this has been a good time and i've enjoyed talking about it with you yeah I feel like the season started strong for me, uh, but, you know, and, and a lot of people point to the advantages. I feel like the advantages are like an easy thing to criticize. Um, and I don't completely disagree. Uh, but for me, it's just it's just been the editing. I feel like they have really gone like very obtuse with the editing, like very just kind of like broad and not specific and, you know, not showing us what I, what I, I'm not showing me what I want to see about the strategy. Like, what is actually happening? What is the reasoning here? Where, what are these players thinking? Like, maybe it doesn't exist, but it usually does. Uh, and I just, I've just felt a little lost over these last few episodes in particular about like, okay, well, wh wh what is their plan here? Like, why are they making this decision? Um, and it's hard to feel invested when I, when it just feels like, it it just feels like I, I, I could be I, I could be, you know, pulling the arm of a, a slot machine to see which two faces pop up as the targets. You know what I mean? Uh, like, who's it going to be this week? Ryan and James. OK, uh, it's like, oh, all right. <laughs> OK, <laughs> like this. Oh, I guess I guess which one? Um, so uh, that's been a little annoying, but uh, it's not been like the like this isn't the worst of Survivor. Like, uh, it's been much worse than this before. Uh, and I think there are still really some some big characters that, I, that I'm enjoying. Um, and, and I think the focus on personal content uh, is something else that I've seen some criticism for. But it's something that I, I actually really enjoy because it does, even when I do feel not grounded in the strategy, I do at least feel a little grounded in the personalities and who these people are uh, and their motivations. So, like, getting the the... Uh, package from Cassidy this week was was huge because I feel like Cassidy was somebody that I didn't really know much about and now I feel like oh she feels like a real human to me now uh, like I understand her backstory I feel like I I know why she's here why she's fighting so hard like uh, I like knowing these things um, I just wish that I also knew more backstory of what was happening on my screen in the strategy Mm -hmm. No, I totally agree. There's just moments where it's just like, man, I wish I could have seen that. A, more flashbacks even would help. I don't like using flashbacks all the time, but at this point, I'm just kind of like, well, we're missing something, obviously. When did Sammy and Carla even bond like this? Um, right. Yeah, like, I would like to know that. Um, and I like to know that about a lot of these relationships. I have no clue who Cody's number two is. Like, I know that, like, he just brought, the, he has Gabler in this final three, but that could be fake for all we know. Mm -hmm. All I know is that Cody really likes Jesse. They've been working together this whole time. But if Cody has no relationship with the rest of the tribe, you wouldn't even know it. Like, they, they we, we just don't get that much from him. And this is not unique to this season of Survivor, but with Survivor being only 26 days now, we have a lot less Survivor to do uh, the catch up with, right? So uh, I wish there was a way we could get probably more days um or find a better balance between the backstory and the strategy on the island but they're doing the best they can with what they have uh i just wish that you know they could just tweak it a little bit so overall i'm good with the season i'm hoping that it ends with a bang uh which is weird because i, I i'm rooting for owen because of my draft but i'm also rooting for carla in a lot of ways just because she's been like she seems like a very pleasant person and like somebody who i would like as a winner um but if Carla's going to win, and I wanted to win it with a bang. That means it's about to get really messy for her, and uh, I hope she can navigate it, um, but we shall see. Yeah, I also, uh, I complained last week about the um, the tribal councils. That... Been on pinch too long? No? 
it's uh, very uh, just comfortable, you know? Uh, it's just tribal councils. I, I feel like it's, I, I'm, I'm noticing it more now because, you know, it's just happening over and over. But like, why, I, I feel like this is a new phenomenon. Why do we need to recap the episode that we just saw at Tribal Council? Yeah. Right? Like, why are we rehab? Like, they're telling Jeff, like, they're doing the live feed update to Jeff uh, of, like, what happened. But we just saw it. Like, uh, like Jeff is like, so it seems like there's some tension. Yeah, Jeff. So what happened is that he, they they had an and then they have the same argument. Uh, and then it's like, OK, so so what's going on with this vote? Well, Jeff. This is what we just told you in the package, like before the commercial. Let's explain it now to Jeff. Uh, and then we'll have meaningless conversation where we talk in circles. And I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. And I don't think that's unique to this season either. I just think that because the show is so much shorter, not like the runtime, but the actual amount of days, that we don't have time for that. We really, I really would write, like to know what happened in the stuff we didn't see, not the stuff that we actually saw. Um, so in the past, yeah, you could rehash all these arguments and stuff like that from camp life. Um, and But we had more time, you know? So I'd prefer that they cut it down a little bit. But sometimes tribal council is the only time we actually get to see them talking. You know, it just feels like there's so much challenge. Maybe, just maybe, we can just cut down on the challenge time a little bit. Like if Carla stands up for 45 minutes and you show her for a total of seven, you can show her for five. You know, uh, mm -hmm. as long as you show her win, I don't really care. Um, so maybe start yada yada as some of these uh, challenges and um, then you can spend time on other stuff. Yes. Uh, all right. So you you had a, a weird reaction when I played that sound clip. It sounded like you didn't hear it. I don't think and I don't think you've been hearing my sound clips all podcasts. <laughs> no, I was going to ask you after we stopped recording because that was when I noticed it. I was like, wait a minute, Taryn. I, I definitely because I could hear it faint, like very faint. I was like, oh, shit, he's playing a, a sound clip. I was going to be like, afterwards, you might want to go edit those in. <laughs> so here's what happened, because I'm not going to edit them in. Uh, no. <laughs> you'll just listen. Well, there, haven't, <laughs> there haven't been that many. There were no new ones. Uh, and I queued them all up. So you've all you've heard them all before. If you listen to the podcast, um, it, what happened is I was streaming the episode today and my computer crashed and then it like updated after the crash. Everything mm -hmm. got reset, including apparently all of my soundbite outputs. <laughs> Wait, so, oh, the outputs are, so can you, you can hear So them. I, I was hearing it, but it was not outputting to the proper place, uh, mm -hmm. which means I don't think anybody else heard it, um, but it's okay. Like, this, this is, uh, this will just be a, a funny. Look, Taryn, we are professionals. Did you see it? I don't think they noticed. I think you and I noticed because uh, we are trained to do so, but I think the audience was probably none the wiser. That that would be interesting. Interesting to to see, like uh, if 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 you caught it before, uh, if you if you caught it when you caught it. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, and then that's the thing. I didn't catch it until the end, so that's when I was like, "Oh shit!" But I feel like the listeners, they're smart. They probably caught on. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, all right, that's what we have for you this week. Um, you can of course find me over on Twitch, where my computer is occasionally crashing, uh, but also watching these episodes live with all of you um also watching the amazing race as that is also kind of coming to a close in the next couple of weeks uh very exciting stuff over there if you're a big brother fan um and uh you know playing goose goose duck doing all kinds of things talking to jacob jones um uh, occasionally on mondays uh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um and uh you know uh find me next week for the next uh stock watch and, and all that kind of fun stuff Chappelle, what do you got going on uh nothing really just uh working all the time podcasting as much as i can i'm currently on silent podcast wrapping up season three of our coverage of never have i ever myself and sasha who was recently on the stock watch not too long ago um so if y'all are fans of sasha or mine or at least never have i ever on netflix check that out on silent podcast um because we're wrapping up season three and we'll be getting season four when uh it drops next summer uh i'm also wrapping up coverage of the walking dead it's the series finale of the the walking dead Taryn. it's been like 12 years and we're finally done with the walking wow. dead proper yeah so on post show recaps myself jessica lease aj mass and josh wiggler will be bringing you coverage of the final episode of the walking dead um so check that out on post show recaps uh, show that also, really lived up to the name huh 
Uh, yeah, really lived up to that. I mean, I'm pretty sure it ended like 10 years ago, but it's still walking it's around. Just, just walking around. Oh, and there are spinoffs, Taryn. So it's, <laughs> this is the last of The Walking Dead proper, but Dead City coming soon. Oh, uh, boy. Yeah, and if you didn't, if you haven't been keeping up with The Walking Dead, uh, Fear the Walking Dead, I'm sorry, it's still out there. So Is it still, is Fear the Walking Dead is still going? Fear the Walking Dead is still out there. And wow. I think we have a, a, a Daryl show coming soon, maybe a, 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 a Rick Grimes movie or something like that. We got Walking Dead forever, you know, so we're covering it all on Post Show Recaps. Check all of that out. Also on Post Show Recaps, uh, Mari... Uh, Latanya and myself just finished up our coverage of the final uh, episode of Atlanta on FX. That was a great time. So check that out on our final podcast on Atlanta on Post Show Recaps. And then uh, myself and Gia Worthy are covering Abbott Elementary uh, every other week. We try to drop an episode to talk about the two previous episodes of Abbott Elementary. Uh, so check that out on our feed, Abbott Elementary, um, or a Post Show Recap. Uh, and then I'm still talking about Netflix shows, Taryn. Me and Rob are talking about uh, Christmas movies this week. We did the Lindsay Lohan Christmas movie, Falling for Christmas, with Lindsay Lohan and Court Overstreet, uh, with our special guest, Matt Ligori, to talk about um, this week's episode of Nothing But Netflix. So you can follow me on Twitter at Chappelle's underscore show, probably for a limited time, because it doesn't look like Twitter's going to be hanging out for a while. Uh, but you can follow me on Instagram, uh, Chappelle TNT, if you want to keep up with me if Twitter does go down the shitter. Uh, but that's about it, Taryn. All right. Well, thank you all so much for joining us here this week, and I will see all of you next time.